Hi, my name is James Gurney. Every landscape painting is a form of magic trick. You want the viewer to believe that they're seeing through the two-dimensional surface into a real world beyond. Yeah, I like the way the uh, road curves off slightly to the left. And there's bits of uh, water and snow on there. The first line that I draw is the horizontal line, or the eye level. All of the diagonal lines of the edges of the road converge on points on that eye level. I've got yellow ochre, raw sienna, white, hooker's green, ultramarine blue, and light red. And I'm using first some clear water just to wet the surface. I used a watercolor pencil for drawing those lines and it dissolves a little bit as I go when I, when I wet it with the water. Now I want to start putting in some sky color, working into the very wet surface of the watercolor paper. It's okay if the water and the pigment flow downwards because I can f clean that up later. Now I'm using a large flat synthetic brush to dab in some darker tones for the far trees. I'm only using a few colors here because I don't really need any more colors than that. In the winter time, all of the greens are muted down to browns and ochres. And because I'm painting toward the sunlight, the colors are less saturated or high chroma than they would be if I was facing away from the light. I can switch to a smaller pointed brush now. The purpose of the wristwatch is just to keep track of time and to let you know when I'm speeding up the camera. Like right now I'm going eight times faster as I paint in the shadow side of those clouds. I'm going to use some cerulean blue, which is a good color for the sky color seen beyond the clouds. Now it's time to paint the far fields. They're a dark ochre color, kind of a dark yellow. And then the road is relatively cooler and lighter. And that light, cool wash is a good base color for the wet reflections from the dirt road, the reflections of the sky. And you can see the tire tracks and the footprints, hoof prints. A muddy dirt road after a rainstorm or a snowstorm leaves a track of everyone that's been on it. From this point in the road, we look back past the last horse paddocks to the big open fields and the wild woods beyond. That's where the coyote lives and where the old roads are overgrown by the woods. The horses in their paddocks look over at us when we walk by. They have the protection and the food that comes with being domesticated but I wonder how much of them yearns to be free and wild. I know Smooth loves to run free and we can let him off the leash. I'll mix a middle blue to paint Chopinique Ridge across the Hudson River where we've hiked a few times and I can see across there the clouds have rolled in and they'll be blocking the setting sun. I used the side of the brush, dragged across the rough paper to get that texture. 
And before I paint the fences, I want to show the texture inside the paddock on the far right, which is all broken up and bumpy from the horses walking on it. Little bits of snow gathered in the hoof prints. All these areas dry up pretty quickly so I can mix a dark color using ultramarine and light red and start painting in the fences. There's the metal fence or gate and then the wooden fence around the paddocks. I use the very tip of a long round brush for painting these thin details. And I start in the background areas and work my way forward so that they overlap foreground over background. So as you can see, I'm shifting mentally between the appearances and the surfaces, the surface of the paper, the brushes, the paint strokes, and the surface of the scene itself as it appears in this momentary afternoon light on this day in January. And then to think about the things that are unseen, how it would look at nighttime by moonlight, and how it looks in the spring with all the flowers, and the summertime with all the birds. And so I'm thinking about these unseen things. The road is a symbol of a journey, this path that takes us from the domesticated paddocks to the wild fields and forests. I don't know if the viewer takes away any of those thoughts or feelings when they look at a picture like this, but they're in there somewhere, trapped like water beneath ice. The Irish author and philosopher John O'Donohue wrote a blessing that reflects on all this. May your inner eye see through the surfaces and glean the real presence of everything that meets you. May your soul beautify the desire of your eyes that you might glimpse the infinity that hides in the simple sights that seem worn to your usual eyes. Looking for infinity in common places and seeing through the surface of the painting by being informed by your inner eye, to me that's the magic of painting and that's what brings it to life. Now it's decision time. You can click on this related video or enjoy this playlist, or you can visit my website or subscribe to my channel. See you next time around.